What if? It's a compelling question, especially when discussing Resident Evil. What if Resident Evil ends up as a remake of Sweet Home? What if Capcom never reboots Resident Evil 2? And in the case of Resident Evil 3, what if we ended up with Hunk on a cruise ship fighting plant monsters? Today, we're going to take a look at how a small game that was never intended to be a mainline Resident Evil title became the third entry into the series. Welcome to Arcadeology, Resident Evil 3. After Capcom released Resident Evil 2 in January of 1998, General Manager Yoshiki Okamoto greenlit several projects in the preceding months. Resident Evil 3 for the PlayStation, Resident Evil Code Veronica for the Sega Dreamcast, as well as Resident Evil Zero for the Nintendo 64. The idea was to keep numbered games on Sony and use different names for games made for Sega and Nintendo. Masaki Yamada was named the director of Resident Evil 3. Yamada was a system planner on Resident Evil 2 and had also worked on the first Resident Evil and the director's cut as an event designer. Yamato worked with Resident Evil 2 director Hideki Kamiya to rough out a story. Capcom canceled the project, but the idea was to set it on a cruise ship with Resident Evil 2 minigame hero Hunk as a potential protagonist, fighting his way through plant monsters. This concept art has been circulating for several years, sketched by artist Satoshi Nakai. Yamada ceded the director role to Kamiya, and they threw out the cruise ship scenario. Yamada would stay on the project, however, as a systems planner. While this was happening, Okamoto had greenlit a smaller Resident Evil project intended for the PlayStation. He wanted this little project to be a Gaiden, or side story, from the main Resident Evil franchise. Shinji Mikami, the head of Studio 4, assigned Kazuhiro Aoyama as director, and Yasuhisa Kawamura as the scenario writer. Before his time at Capcom, Kazuhiro Aoyama was considering going into professional wrestling, Unfortunately, an injury he suffered meant he had to give that up and instead studied acting at university. After graduation, he took a job at Capcom and worked as a system planner on both Resident Evil 1 and 2. His role in the sequel was to ensure that the gameplay was balanced. He also designed the sewer levels and the minigame which featured Hunk titled The Fourth Survivor. Before joining Capcom, Yasuhisa Kawamura was working for Yukito Kashiro in the development of the manga series Battle Angel Alita, and would eventually go on to write the novelization of the manga. He got a job at Capcom when they were looking for writers despite thinking he failed the interview by being too passionate. When Mikami assigned Kawamura to the Resident Evil Gaiden project, he did not have much experience as a game writer. His only previous role at Capcom was working with Shinji Mikami to tighten up parts of Dino Crisis. Most of the flagship staff, the subsidiary which employed Capcom's scenario writers, were tied up, including Noboru Sugimura, the writer of Resident Evil 2, who was deep into scripting for Code Veronica. As Aoyama and Kawamura began to hash out the project, they were assigned a team of mostly rookie developers. Management had split up most of the Resident Evil veterans amongst Resident Evil 3, Resident Evil Code Veronica, and Resident Evil Zero. The game's working title was Resident Evil 1.9, as the story they had come up with was set immediately before the events of Resident Evil 2. The story featured three umbrella mercenaries trying to escape Raccoon City. To simplify development, Resident Evil 1.9 would use the same engine as Resident Evil 2, as well as some of the same assets. There were a few changes made to the engine to make the game slightly more action-oriented. They tweaked the zombies to move faster and in larger groups. Gunpowder combos were able to make different types of ammo. They added an automatic 180 degree turn feature as well as a dodge mechanic. And the player's running speed was also increased. There were a few additional items that were discussed but never added to the engine, including the ability to attack while moving and barring doors. One of the main hooks of the game was an antagonist that would pursue the player through the course of the game. The creature, known as Nemesis, did not start development as a hulking brute. Instead, the early concept for it was a slime monster, not unlike the 1950s horror film The Blob. 
It was a hideous creature that could squeeze through any opening and kill with an acid touch. However, it became apparent to Aoyama that the creature's appearance had no distinguishing features. He decided this made it nearly impossible for the player to grasp that they were fighting the same monster throughout the game, and not just fighting different incarnations of the same type of monster. They ended up switching from a blob-like monster to something more along the lines of the Tyrant or Mr. X from Resident Evil 2. Aoyama has mentioned that part of his inspiration for the Nemesis creature were the scenes in Day of the Dead where researchers are trying to train zombies. Throughout the game, players are offered decisions as to how to deal with Nemesis. Aoyama's team designed it this way to enhance the replayability of the game. No matter what the player chose, it would advance the plot. However, making a choice, or not making one at all, usually dictated whether the player had to face off against Nemesis. In some instances, it led the player to areas that would have been inaccessible otherwise, and in others, the choice would simply dictate which entrance the player took to access a new location. Partway through the production of Resident Evil 1.9, things were shifting on the Code Veronica project that would have significant impact. Let's rewind a bit. During the voice recordings for Resident Evil 2, Hideke Kamiya asked the voice actress for Claire to record an additional line that was not in the original script. The line was, Chris, I have to find you. Noboru Sugimura, the writer for both Resident Evil 2 and Code Veronica, would call Kamiya angry for the inclusion because it meant that the storyline for Jill he had in Code Veronica should now be rewritten to include Claire instead. This plot change left Jill being unutilized in any of the games that were in development. Management informed Aoyama and the team got to work on folding Jill in as the main character while adjusting the mercenary's role in the game. As Kawamura fleshed out the game, the name Resident Evil 1.9 became a bit of a misnomer. He developed some additional plot that would take place after Resident Evil 2, and so internal production used the title Resident Evil 1.9 plus 2.1. This Kingdom Hearts-like title, though, would be removed in favor of the subtitle, Last Escape in Japan and Nemesis in North America and Europe. In mid-1998, the staff at Capcom heard that Sony was going to announce the PlayStation 2 within the next year. Hideke Kamiya, who Capcom had given great authority over his Resident Evil 3 project, was determined to produce the game for the new console. I think Resident Evil 2 represents everything I would be able to achieve for a survival horror game on PlayStation. My vision for the next game was to make something brand new and more provoking. As a result, I decided to make Resident Evil 3 for the PlayStation 2. Kawamura stated that this caused Kamiya to scrap his project and refocus it in favor of developing for the new system. This shift is what caused Capcom to elevate Resident Evil 1.9. Aoyama added additional context stating that he believed it was not only the initial announcement of the PS2, but the PS2's delay from December 1999 to March of 2000, as well as much later in North America. If I remember correctly, Capcom wanted to become a publicly listed company during the fiscal year 1999. Capcom needed a hit title to gain investor confidence. They thought that a new numbered Resident Evil game could help them achieve their goal easier. Either way, Aoyama was called into a meeting with Mikami and Okamoto to discuss this change in plans. Capcom decided to retitle Kamiya's game to be Resident Evil 4 and move Resident Evil 1.9 to be Resident Evil 3. Aoyama, Kawamura, and the team would now be on the hook for additional content. This game was supposed to be a spin-off, so I stuck to that framework during development. I was not expecting it to become Resident Evil 3 at all. The game needed to have its playtime extended. Originally, it was meant to end after the encounter in the clock tower. Additional content included the Raccoon City Park as well as the Dead Factory. The team added extra rooms to existing areas. By Aoyama's estimation, the additional content lengthened the playtime by about 30 minutes. An anecdote about the last stages of production that I found charming was that initially, a lot of the signage in Raccoon City used the logos of real companies. Aoyama mentioned during a director's commentary playthrough that when they realized that there could be litigation because of this, they swapped out all of the real company names with fake ones, as well as translated versions of staff member names. Capcom released Resident Evil 3 on September 22, 1999 in Japan and November 11, 1999 in North America. The game was a tremendous financial success for Capcom. Not only was it one of the best-selling Resident Evil titles, 
but the profit on the game was also substantially higher than usual due to the smaller team and shorter production cycle it took to create it. The other games mentioned all deserve videos of their own, but as a coda, I'll state that Resident Evil Code Veronica was released only a few months later, in February of 2000, for the Sega Dreamcast. Resident Evil 4 famously strayed so far from the Resident Evil formula that it became a completely different game, Devil May Cry. Capcom released it ultimately in August of 2001. Resident Evil Zero had its development halted for the Nintendo 64 and moved to the Nintendo GameCube, eventually releasing in November of 2002. As for Resident Evil 3, it had tremendous impact solidifying Jill as a fan favorite and also introducing Nemesis, one of the most notorious enemies the franchise has ever seen. Capcom released a remake of the game in March of 2020. If you'd like to see a video on the production of the remake, let me know down in the comments below. If you like videos like this and want a way to support me, please consider joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash arcadeology. Patrons are eligible to receive bonus content, as well as watch videos early and gain access to the channel Discord. I'd like to give a shout out to patrons Chef Toker and Megabyte. Thank you so much for your support. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. My name is Kevin, and you've been watching Arcadeology.